The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer-to-peer. Everyone, this is Bowdy Anarchist coming at you with the price report pre-recorded on Friday evening. Obviously, the big news is that Bitcoin, uh, specifically Bitcoin, but crypto in general, uh, made a big pump this week. Um, so we're going to start with looking at the macro as usual. We'll just run through that really quickly, and then we'll talk about crypto since that's the big news. Okay, so we're looking here at the dollar index. This is the long, uh, sort of a, a long-term chart where we had the peak last year, and then we got these two um, sort of uh, important resistance lines. And basically, the dollar kind of bumped up against that. This is a little bit of strength. Um, basically, you know, we spent some time trying to break through that, came down, and then sort of stopped halfway. To me, overall, this chart looks like it has the potential for reversal. Um, this is a long-term chart, so it could play out over longer time frames, right? It could take well until maybe Q3, Q4. Uh, for now, maybe I would kind of expect just kind of sideways action, something like that. Maybe we could finally get into this area eventually, fake out to the downside and then pump, just like crypto did. No, I'm just kidding. It doesn't have to look like this, right? It could look uh, a lot of different ways. But um, overall, I, I would suspect probably st- uh, stability with the dollar here. Um, let's go ahead and take a look now at the Federal Reserve balance sheet. If you guys remember, we had the big pump in March. The Federal Reserve had to expand their balance sheet to uh, sort of paper over the banking crisis. Um, but they were mostly short-term loans, so it's not surprising that we saw this thing drop back down. Over the last week, this thing fell. And the Federal Reserve, if we are to believe what they say, and overall, they have basically done what they said they're going to do. Um, this thing will probably continue slowly going down. The Federal Reserve says they want to they want to solve the balance sheet, and I think I believe them. So overall, this going down over long time frames could end up weighing on the markets. Again, maybe not too incongruent with how this Dixie chart looks, right? This thing might eventually sort of decide to break the upside. And that could kind of be congruent here with um, a little bit of bleed out in the Federal Reserve balance sheet. Um, taking a look at the S&P 500 here, uh, you'll notice that we basically, we talked last week about this, uh, this sort of rising trend line here and that this might be a reason to expect some resistance, and that's kind of what we got. So if you're trading stocks, you know we're really looking at the potential for kind of a, a top and reversal here. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean we're gonna just like crash, you know, crash and burn or anything, but um, th- there, this thing has a lot of momentum, right? Like that's a really big move. We could see a reversal, you know, maybe even make a slightly higher high, and that wouldn't be um, you know, too crazy to see. But I tend to think that most of the gains that the stock market is going to make have already largely been made. Uh, you can kind of see the same thing here with the NASDAQ, right? We talked about this spot um, as, as being a significant point of resistance. And uh, indeed, it, it has actually um, seen the market come back down. So it, it also, there's the idea here that there could be some rotation from stocks into crypto at this moment. Um, we, we have seen with BlackRock and we've seen some of these institutions are expressing a little bit more willingness, perhaps, um, to regard crypto or at least Bitcoin with, uh, with a bit more respect. So, um, but at the same time, you will talk about this later. I want to caution you guys against really buying hook, line and sinker into this BlackRock narrative about how, uh, you know, how, how the institutions are here and the FOMO and, and it's time and all this stuff. Like, you've got to be really careful about that. Um, it, it feels kind of similar to the end of 2020, especially the beginning of 2021. Um, so we'll talk more about that a little bit later. Uh, but that's basically the macro for you. Um, if you're if you're a trap fight guy, um, you know things tend to move slowly. Things don't kind of just break out like Bitcoin uh, just did. Uh, don't expect to be getting mad gains here with the stock market. It's probably not going to happen. Um, it could take some time and consolidation. If things are going to go higher, it's, it's probably going to take some consolidation here. Okay, so um, let's go into, oh, well, there's uh, Monero, actually. Uh, you know what, why don't we just talk about Monero? The chart's there. Uh, that's Monero versus Bitcoin, but let's go to the Monero versus the dollar. So um, we talked about last week how, you know, we've kind of got like this, this bear market channel, how we sort of firmly came back into that channel. But we also talked about how the TA on Monero necessarily, you know, wasn't behaving as, as well as we might like it to. Right, like this action right here, you, you really kind of expect that to break to the upside. And I, and I guess that's kind of what happened without, you know, with this little fake out to the downside first. Um, the other thing, too, is that Monero is a small market cap coin, and the small market caps just don't behave as sort of nicely, predictably as maybe the larger market caps do. Um, so, you know, we broke down what was really a very long trend line, uh, and then we just shot right back up to the upside. So at this point, we basically broken out, uh, fully broken out from the sort of like bear market. Uh, downslope and resistance line. 
So that's nice to see. Uh, you know, we'll see how long that can continue. I mean, I guess it seems reasonable to suspect that if crypto and, and Bitcoin continue moving up, that Monero should experience positive action from that. Okay, so this is the Monero Bitcoin chart, and you'll notice that uh, this this line down here is sort of like the very long term um, uh, support line. You know, basically from the lifetime of the chart. So uh, these lines can be, you know, they, they can be a little bit fuzzy, right? Like if we draw it this way, we're kind of not quite connecting that spot down there. So maybe we can move it up, you know, but when we do that, you know, you see it kind of like broke down for just a moment uh, with some wicks. But um, anyways, this was not surprising. We really, I mean, by all means, at the point that we started playing in this range, we really had to expect that we were going to be somewhere down here at the bottom of this support line eventually. Um, so, you know, we'll just have to wait and see how this goes here. We could take a look at the divergences and see that uh, Basically, they've been on the positive side here for, for most of the week. All the different exchanges have been offering slightly more than Kraken um, to acquire Monero. So again, this is probably just them trying to keep their doors open, trying not to look you know, too too much like scumbags. Uh, let's take a look here at Monero versus Ethereum. This right here could, you could arguably try and call this a bottoming pattern. Um, I'm not necessarily totally convinced by that, um, you know, but again, we'll, we'll just have to see. At the very least, we've at least gotten out of this down this down sloping channel here. Uh, so you know, we'll we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, again, I'm you know, for me, Monero is a hodl. I don't really like to trade it that much. Um, part of the reason, you know, is because this, this crazy action that sometimes happens there, where you just like dip down and, and then break to the upside. Um, okay, so let's finish off here, just looking at uh, the crypto market in general. Uh, that's total, but let's start with Bitcoin because you know, Thomas was the thing that was, was really going up this past week. So, um, you know, this chart should be pretty easy to understand. We drew this line here last week where we sort of just connected those points and said, hey, that might be a spot for, for support. And it certainly seemed like it was. Um, that was also a spot where the August top was, you know, in, in that spot. So these were all kind of like convergences of support. Um, you know, and like we said the last week that that fat lady had not yet sung. Um, so to expect that, you know, we, we could potentially get a move to the upside. Uh, in terms of the shorter structure, we had this, uh, we had the, the descending wedge, and we basically just with momentum violently broke out of that. So at this moment, we're headed up towards this uh, this resistance point that was set last June, uh, and then we're kind of making our way out of this, uh, you know, out of the last summer, uh, or sorry, June, uh, the, the summer of 2021. Right now, we've got momentum. Right now, this thing could uh, even break this area with momentum. However, there are some important statistical levels, uh, moving averages and standard deviations that are hanging out right around the 33 area. I would expect that that 33 area could be difficult to broach. Um, if we wanted to try and make the case that Bitcoin could actually make it to 45 or 50,000 uh, on this sort of mid-cycle run, what we want to see is basically breaking this line with momentum, right? Breaking this area with momentum and then uh, probably taking a pause at some of those statistical levels and then consolidating and then maybe going uh, for another big move to the upside. So that's personally what I would want to see to try and get long with my short-term stack. Uh, as I told you guys last week, you know, my long-term stack or my long-term trading stack was still in play. I was just um, reducing my risk by getting out of the short-term plays. And then of course, you know, the hodl is the hodl, you, you don't sell that. So at the moment, um, you know, things look like they're on the positive side uh, for Bitcoin. And especially for Bitcoin dominance, we're, we're reaching these uh, sort of horizontal areas of significance, right? You could draw that from, from back there. Um, the other thing is this yellow line here. That's just a, an eye marker for some very long-term standard deviations. Uh, so it, I, I do think that this thing could top out all the way at 53. I, I would expect to at least make 52 and a half and then probably it's 53. At which point, um, you know, we might be able to see a bit more of an altcoin run. There could be some excitement there. Uh, perhaps, maybe not. Um, the last thing that I'll leave with you guys is just sort of a general warning on what we're seeing uh, and what we have seen with some of these narratives. To me, the big news is that Binance and the SEC reached a deal by which Binance would not have their funds frozen. They would just have to repatriate to the United States. Now, that's important because Binance is a big factor in price. And as we know, um, there there is a significant amount of uh, sort of rigging and fraud and, and sort of paper trading that happens um, to help push the price up. So uh, with Binance still in play, that, that sort of makes it a, that makes them able to push the price up here. I think that the uh, the ETF with the BlackRock ETF is more so of a social phenomenon. It's more so like social thing. It's not yet fundamental buying pressure because it's not yet available. It's just it's just an application. Um, so 
just know that uh, you know you need to be you need to tread carefully. Um, but uh, you know things things look kind of positive right here. So good luck to everyone out there, and I hope you guys have fun at MoneroCon.